Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Morg, author, speaker, inventor, uh, board certified orthopedic surgeon. I'm also an endoscopic spine specialist. And over the past 13 years, I've dedicated my practice entirely to the practice of chronic neck and back pain and its resolution. Today, I'm going to talk about discs and disc, what, what the terminology is for disc protrusions and, and uh, disc bulges so that when you read the, your MRI report, you have a little better sense of what's going on. First of all, I'd like to talk, I'd like to just put this up here. This is a model of the spine. This is a vertebrae. This is the disc which we'll be talking about, and this is the vertebrae below it. So you can see that the, the actual vertebrae sandwich the disc, which is the cushion in the center. In the model here, this will be represented as the disc. These are the vertebrae above and below. And this is looking at it as though you'd be looking at it on its side like this. This represents the spinal cord, which is right here. Okay, so we've got the orientation here. Let's take a look. This is a normal disc. Let's just go, this is the nucleus of the disc, the center, what people call a liquid center, but it's not really liquid. It's, it's almost like soft shrimp meat usually. The green is the covering of the annulus, which is the covering of the disc. The pink is the posterior longitudinal ligament. So in a normal disc, the extension, the annulus does not extend beyond the vertebral body, the bony uh, edges. It's just perfectly flat, normal. There's the spinal cord. You can see that it looks good. Nucleus is in the center. In this case, we've got a bulge, and we can see that the bulge, uh, now the nucleus has pushed backward a little bit. There's the pink as the posterior longitudinal ligament, and there's the spinal cord. You can see here that the nucleus is pushing backward and it's expanding the edge of the annulus and the posterior longitudinal ligament beyond the edge of the vertebral bones. That's a bulge. This is a herniation. This is a contained herniation. So why do we say that? Well, this is the center of the nucleus. It's gone out through an annular tear. In other words, this is the annulus. The covering of the disc is the annulus. There's a rupture here through the annulus, and it moves out beyond the annulus here, and yet it is contained by the posterior longitudinal ligament. So that's what's containing it, the posterior longitudinal ligament. There's the spinal cord. You can see how the nerve, is, the nerve here is uh, impinged on uh, by the disc. So on the side, we can see that the disc center of the uh, nucleus extends out through an annular tear beyond the annulus ending and then it ends up out here it's covered by the posterior longitudinal ligament this is what we call a non-contained tear again we've got the nucleus extends out through an annular tear and then in this case it actually extends out beyond the pink which is beyond the posterior longitudinal ligament so this is non-contained okay so it goes out here again it can still indent the uh, spinal cord here it gets out beyond the pink or the posterior lunch ligament. It's not contained anymore. So the last type of tear is a sequestered fragment. This means that a fragment here has lost complete continuity with the uh, nuclear material, that the nucleus itself. So we had a nuclear, we have nucleus here. It extends through a, a tear in the annulus out to the edge and then it actually squirts a piece out here that is no longer in continuity with the original nucleus. That is a sequestered fragment. And really, theoretically, the sequestered fragment, if it was located underneath the ligament, it would be contained. In this case, it's beyond the posterior longitudinal ligament, so it's not contained. So that kind of wraps it up with our discussion of uh, disc herniations and disc bulges and sequestered fragments. Uh, if you've got further questions, uh, please contact me at drtonymork.com and I'll see if I can answer them there. Thank you very much.